those people come and go through that. So, um, but we're, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we have our really big event, uh, starting next week with the pool tournament. And so we're looking pretty good staffing wise there. Um, our part-time staff has entirely been hired from the Cedar Valley area, mostly Waterloo residents, but uh, we've gotten a little bit from the surrounding areas as well. On the full-time side, uh, we've hired two from the Cedar Valley. Uh, one is currently a resident of uh, Cedar, Cedar Falls. One is from Waterloo and continues to reside in Waterloo. Uh, three of them were transfers from other Spectra locations. Two of them are originally Iowa natives and wanted to come back to Iowa, and one of them, myself, uh, transferred in from another location, but uh, have spent an extensive amount of time as a resident of Iowa in the past. Um, we did hire one external hire who uh, was a resident of Iowa for a number of years in the past and uh, moved to Chicago but wanted to get back. And so she is back with us. And then we've got one who's joining us from Cedar Rapids uh, in, a, in just a short time. Uh, we have also been putting systems and procedures into place. Uh, we found that we needed to get vendors set up, housekeeping programs set up, um, point of sale equipment uh, we needed to purchase so that we could track our sales and offer credit cards. And uh, then we also have worked on establishing booking procedures, uh, entering data into our event and client management program. And then finally, we've been ramping up our sales and marketing efforts. Uh, there is no collateral, no website, no Facebook presence or anything like that. So we've, we've established a Facebook page. We haven't done a lot of activity on it yet. We are getting ready to go pretty, pretty hardcore on that and then get a website rolled out pretty quickly here and getting our sales efforts going as well. Did you say data? Yes. Okay. We, um, okay. Uh, so we've, uh, really been focusing on operating our existing events up to this point. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were evaluating all the business that has been booked. Uh, we want to make sure that it's actually a booked piece of business. We had a number of events that were on the list that we were told what was confirmed, but we've come to find out that it was not confirmed. So we're going through and making sure that everything is a valid piece of business so that we know where our holes in the calendar are and so that we're not expecting somebody to show up that's not showing up and that we're not sitting here waiting or we're sitting here and somebody shows up like hey we're supposed to do an event okay so we're, we're working through that and um, I think we're finally through that and then um, we want to make sure we're meeting the needs of our events and operating them efficiently and delivering a high level of service one of the things that we found that people commented on in the past was some challenges getting service there. So we want to make sure that we are always available and delivering a great experience. And we have been receiving a lot of positive feedback about those efforts and it has been noticeable. Uh, I've, you know, for instance, I had somebody walk, I was in the basement near the kitchen and somebody walked through uh, who had previously worked for the hotel and commented on the cleanliness of the kitchen and the, the storage rooms. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great. That's what we've been focusing on is trying to get these things up to, up to par. Uh, the other thing that we noticed was that there is a uh, significant lack of office space in the facility. It was not designed with uh, much office space. So, and then the office space that was there was um, lighting was failing, uh, the ceilings were falling in, uh, the carpeting was worn out, there were holes in the wall. Uh, so we wanted to refurbish those, those spaces and also go th uh, through and create some other spaces that we could house all of our staff to service these events. Uh, one of those was taking a coat check in the lobby and turning it into an office space. It's still a work in progress, but we should be, by the end of the month, finished with that. It will give us a presence in the office so that when people show up wanting to inquire about booking an event, they can find us easily. Uh, right now we're kind of hidden, so we want to make sure we're visible and have a presence there so that we can also have the building open to the public so they can come in and see what's going on and um, we can have an eye on who's coming and going from the building that way. And the other coat check we are currently turning into a, uh, it's kind of a multi-purpose space. It'll be a, a conference room most of the time, but we'll be able to move the furniture to the side and make it a show office or a um, coat check as well. And then we also will be able to rent that to clients. So it generates some additional revenue by having more space available for events. Uh, we've begun our sales and marketing efforts. Uh, we have a list of potential clients and associations and other business that can go on, that does business in the state of Iowa holds events. We've been talking to some potential business, uh, issued a couple proposals and are really ramping those efforts up. 
the hotel coming online in uh, the summer will be a very key piece to that. And so we've started dialogue with them about how to work together on creating proposals as well. And finally, we've been using the expertise that we have within Spectra to uh, work with the city staff and their consultants to identify the scope of necessary renovations and improvements. Uh, this building has really solid bones and has a lot of potential, but it just needs a lot of uh, upgrades and is really positioned to be a, really a big boon to the city and uh, the surrounding area as well. Uh, our first major event was the IOMA State Darts Tournament. This was held about three weeks after we took over, so it was a nice stress test for us to really see where things were, see where the weaknesses were, see where the weaknesses in the facility were, and uh, it really helped us expose those weaknesses, but it also helped us learn some really positive things and some great opportunities for us moving forward about um, how things operate. One of the key things that we found was that we generated some sales trend data that previously didn't exist. Uh, the point of sale system that we purchased um, was gives us hour by hour reporting on uh, our sales and we can also look and see what items were sold on a particular day and so we can make sure that we have the right amount of staff at the right time, we have the right product mix and we are prepared so that when we know a wave of rush is coming for lunch we can have more lunch items ready and, and that sort of thing. So that really will help us improve that efficiency, reduce wasted product, that sort of thing. And our client on that had some very positive comments, commented that they felt food was fresher, the offerings were better, we had, they had some feedback about some of the things that we could offer as well, and so we are taking that into account as well. So, um, so we've had some great comments on that. And um, then I also wanted to update you, uh, as part of our agreement with the city, we committed to uh, a significant capital investment uh, for items for the facility. We like to use those funds for items that enhance the guest experience, improves the facility, or creates new revenue opportunities. So we tried to identify things that checked as many of those boxes as possible. And so we came up with a few areas and we, uh, to, that we identified would be great, have the best impact. The majority of those funds we are planning on using for food and beverage equipment. These are items that our guests interact with for every meal function uh, primarily. Uh, this is new china, new flatware, glassware, buffet service items, the chafing dishes, and it all gives a nice, clean, modern look to it. Uh, the stuff that is there now has had its time and it's uh, the, the it's it's a mixture of various things so it's time to retire those and put them out to their their rest home and so uh, that's kind of the biggest thing we're going with there we also uh, are going to look at other areas that may help us improve our efficiency in terms of getting product to the bars and to the locations that it needs to be as well uh, we've also heard comments about needing to offer uh, more and better audio visual services so uh, we are making uh, an investment in new equipment like microphones, speakers, projectors, screens, podiums, and the associated hardware with those. Uh, there's currently a dance floor in the building, and it is at the end of its, it's beyond its service life. It's worn out. Um, it's also an older style that is very, uh, very labor intensive to set up and take down each time. So we have ordered a new dance floor that is Magnetic, it all goes together with magnets and just requires a tool to break it apart at the end of the time and uh, cuts our our setup time from needing about four people for about two hours to two people in about 15 to 30 minutes. So um, it will be a, and it's, it's bigger panels, so there's fewer and they're probably about the same weight or less than the existing panels. So ergonomically, it'll be better for them too. So uh, it's a nice, clean, fresh look too. So as we refresh the facility, It'll really give that nice modern look to the facility as well. Uh, we've ordered new expo equipment. This is mainly pipe and drape, table skirting, and uh, stanchions. Uh, the facility currently has some of these, but uh, on a very limited basis, and it's all worn out. It's uh, the fabric is threadbare. It's stained. It's just it's it's a color that's very odd, and it's just seen its days. And the uh, hardware that supports it is worn out just from heavy use. It's not any abuse, it's just heavy use. So again, like the China, let's put it into retirement. <laughs> uh, so we've got that on order and we have enough to uh, actually 
do most events that come into the facility and will be an opportunity for us to pull some more out revenue back into the facility that was previously kind of going to outside vendors uh, there. And we also electrical equipment. We are upgrading the equipment there, the distribution equipment, the cabling, and then uh, also possibly upgrades to the infra electrical infrastructure of the building uh, that will make it easier to offer these services. Uh, that's a big revenue source on expo shows um, for, for exhibitors. So we want to make sure that we're able to capture that and do it efficiently and make sure that that's uh, a great opportunity there. And then finally, uh, we are planning on replacing all the interior digital signage and uh, locate this in strategic locations and provide better wayfinding throughout the facility, uh, information about upcoming events and the events that are currently in the facility, and also provide us to sell uh, sponsorships as part of a package. Uh, if we sell a sponsorship for, say, our um, soft drinks, they will want to have in a mix, their logo come through on a slide. So this will give us some some ways of packaging that and giving them some value to that type of thing. So what we're real all here for is the uh, budget proposal. And so as part of this, you'll see uh, our our kind of some information. You'll see our six month period and our full year period there. Um, We've been going through trying to evaluate the existing business. We thought there were a number of items that were fully booked that were not truly finalized. Uh, recognizing that renovations and improvements over the next year to, may make some spaces unavailable at times. We want to be very conservative with our revenue projections, keeping them mostly in line with what we had planned for this initial period. Um, just now it's a full year number versus a six month number. Uh, and then in keeping with that plan with the revenue on the expense side, we are uh, kind of doing the same thing. Um, we have discovered during this period uh, that we've been operating, there are a number of items uh, that we needed to uh, increase, which did cause us to more than double that six month number. I'm sure you're wondering about that. Uh, we discovered a number of deferred maintenance items uh, that were, I, I wanna make sure that everybody understands it's not anybody's fault within the city that nobody was just ignoring them. There just wasn't an awareness of these items. And so uh, we want, they just were not reported or for a variety of reasons, they were just not out there. And as we've been able to really get into a deep dive on the evaluation, have recognized that there are these items that are either a problem now or have the potential to develop into a problem. So we did increase our maintenance line item uh, so that we can work through this uh, deferred maintenance so that we can make sure we don't have any systems failures or any other minor failures that may present something that puts the facility in the city and in a bad light. Um, we also found that there's everyday use items like tools, mops, brooms, chemical dispensers, trash cans, that they're either, there's none of, there's not enough of those items, that the items that are there are broken or worn out. And so we we needed to start working to add to that inventory as well. So we did bump up those line items because they're essential to us to do, uh, to do business efficiently. And ultimately, uh, our goal is to improve on those numbers. Uh, but with a lot of the unknowns and being so early in this process, we wanted to make sure we were presenting a number that we knew we could meet. And uh, hopefully, we can beat that number as well. And finally, um, we, I wanted to present kind of uh, what we wanted to get some ideas out there on the uh, renovation priorities. And we know that there's been a lot of discussion about the improvements to the convention center. And I think everybody could will recognizes the fact that there is a need for that and that it can only benefit us with the volume of business in there. And so in that discussion, I know there's been a lot of parties at play that have had, have their own priorities. And I wanted to make sure we got on record what a meeting or event planner would see as most important to them, because ultimately that's who we're catering to here. And so I took a, took the ideas that have been out there and looked at it from their perspective. If I was coming in to do an event, what I would be focused in on the most. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, it needs to be a comfortable environment. It can't be too hot, can't be too cold. Uh, this, the city put in new boilers and circulating pumps a few years ago. And so those are great. Actually, the stuff that was put in is very good equipment. And so from a heating perspective, we've got what we need. Uh, and, no, and nobody who I've talked to is concerned about the capacity on that system, even with the upgrades and expansions that may occur in the future. 
Uh, what is the problem is the chiller capacity for the building. Um, the consultants for the city have said that the building currently has about 300 tons of tool cooling capacity and should have 600 tons of cooling capacity. So currently out to bid is a project that would increase that by 100 tons to 400 tons. Uh, going beyond that requires some pretty significant electrical infrastructure upgrades that are very expensive. So um, we're approaching this project from the perspective of getting what we can with the existing electrical pieces and then the structural improvements that need to be made uh, to support the additional capacity are also a part of that. It's, so then when in the future, when we have the ability, we can upgrade the electrical service and add the additional capacity to it. So that's currently out to bid and we're hoping to do that this summer, have it completed and uh, make sure that they're comfortable. Uh, the next thing would be the exhibit hall painting. Um, that ceiling, I'm sure you're all aware, is peeling. It's been painted a number of times and continues to peel. So, uh, and if it's not the first question I'm asked, it's within the first three questions I'm asked by every person I talk to about the status of that ceiling. So this is a really important priority. And so rather than going to the trouble of repainting it, um, the uh, ISG has developed a plan that would put a new ceiling in that incorporates lighting. And the way I describe it is think of what you would see in a ballroom with a nice ceiling and that nice finish. That's kind of what we're going for there. And then that's part of a larger plan to turn that space into a much nicer space. And so uh, that would be the next thing because we can't have paint falling down onto plates of food or onto people, that sort of thing. Uh, skywalk improvements, uh, these are very important. And I think that the uh, when, if you talk to the Best Western folks, they would say it's very important to them as well. Uh, currently, the roof and the flashing does leak a lot. There's a lot of water damage through there. Um, the doors and the security aspect of it doesn't fully secure all of the facilities the way it needs to. So uh, those are the most critical needs on that. But then going beyond that, we need to look at um, repairing the water damage, uh, getting heating and cooling into those spaces that are currently not heated or cooled, and um, upgrading the lighting, replacing the carpeting, wall painting, just refreshing those spaces overall. Uh, next up, uh, I'm sure you've all driven by and seen the marquee. Uh, it's kind of a sad state of affairs. It's paint is peeling, video board's not functioning, lighting's not working. Um, if you got into the inside of it, you would see that it's rusted pretty heavily. It's just, it's not in good condition. So we'd like to see that replaced. And um, while it's not something that helps with the interior comfort that a meeting planner would look for, uh, it really would change the look of the facility and allow us to um, advertise what events are currently in the facility, what's coming up, et cetera. Uh, then after that, um, lobby uh, renovations. Uh, this would make an immediate impact on the appearance of the facility. When you come in, you're immediately greeted with a uh, brick floor that's in rough shape, and uh, you're greeted with a ceiling that's um, dated and is starting to sag, a variety of lighting. Uh, there's a large seminar room in the middle and uh, blocks the view and openness of that lobby. So. All of those things, and then you've got escalators that are uh, just maintenance hogs and are a constant source of frustration. They stop a lot. Um, they, they're, they're, so there's just a lot of issues there that we need to go through and and totally refresh that space, remove that seminar room to create an open lobby, which would give a lot of opportunity for people to to do uh, pre-function events in that space. And um, also, I want to point out that throughout all this process, uh, we need to have a plan for equipment upgrade and refresh. Uh, things wear out through use, just and you know that's a good thing because that means we're busy. So, uh, we want to make sure that somewhere along the line, we are planning for a um, regular investment in replacing tables and chairs and other associated event equipment. Um, so I wanted to make sure that was in there. And I was kind of putting these in a little bit of a or priority order. And with the investment we're making, uh, that Spectra is making, that gets us through the first little bit. But then in a year or two, we probably need to be looking um, at doing this on a more regular basis. Not quite to the extent that we are now, but we do need to program some dollars in there for that. Uh, then after that, uh, restrooms, their current configuration, um, they're small. The, they just don't have the capacity. So I uh, would like to renovate those into uh, combining them. And uh, instead of having a total of eight restrooms, um, 
we uh, four men, four women. Uh, we would have two men, two women, and um, then that would increase the fixture count and improve the flow because they're just kind of awkward right now, and uh, also update that look and etc. Um, the next up would be the uh, 4th Street entrance atrium. Uh, we'd like This will add an elevator near the Skywalk, uh, add a whole new entrance on both sides of the 4th Street side of the building, a uh, glass corridor through there, and really provide a nice entrance to the building and a nice look from the street as well. And then uh, along with the exterior, the new entrance, uh, we need to make modifications to that exterior superstructure. That would include covering and, uh, it in some places, removing it in some other cases. And um, as you're doing that, it'd be a good time to replace the roof. Uh, the roof, all sections of the roof are 20 plus years old. So uh, we're doing all these nice improvements inside. We need to make sure we're protecting that envelope of the building. And then um, I, I put it low on the list, but I think this could be done throughout the process, uh, various pieces of this. It's renovation of the meeting space. So this is new ceilings, new lighting, new carpeting, new wall coverings, new operable wall partitions. Those are all things that can be done in phases. So as you work through the projects each year, you may have a little bit of extra money you could put towards doing that in phases as well. Um, anything you can do makes a drastic improvement on that and gives it a fresher look as well. And then uh, finally, improvements to the exhibit hall walls and floors. This would raise the exhibit hall to almost the level of a ballroom, like I mentioned earlier, um, except you'd have a hard floor instead of a carpeted floor. We need the hard floor because we have vehicles that drive in, we have the home show, we have, you know, that sort of thing. So we want to keep that hard surface, but have the walls finished nicely. We'll have it to go with that new ceiling and then also continue the lobby flooring through into there as well. Uh, we think that it's very important to do all of these improvements to raise the bar on the facility. Uh, make, it would make it a first-class facility. Um, the ability to sell this space is contingent on these upgrades. Uh, local and regional competition has grown in the last few years. And so in order to see more activity in the facility, uh, we need to be seen as not only having first-class service, but first-class facilities. That's what I've got. So thank you. Good job. We did provide a simplified draft of the budget for you. This is, that's a big change for the city because we haven't had that budget as part of ours before, but it's there now. I think one of the reasons wasn't the management of the operations of the convention center at the hotel before, because I don't know if you guys knew, there was not even a phone line, correct? Correct. Right. So we went in and put a phone line and there was no... There was no phone lines, no computers. Um, the, there were the furniture, they were working on broken desks that were like, if you pushed the wrong way, it would fall over. Um, chairs were, uh, were held up by Wood, pieces of wood um, in the ki in the kitchen. We found a table, like a prep table, that the caster had broken off. So they used a can of tomato sauce and stuck it under there. So that was the kind of stuff that was going on that we're working through. Um, and so <laughs> um, there there have been a few surprises that we've worked through. Okay. MacGyver. Huh. Yeah. Amazing. So in other words, Mr. Mayor, we're going to start buying some more cans of. <laughs> 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 we may have to. They're going to have to use leftovers from it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. We're and and start. I do want to compliment the city staff that we've been working with has been fantastic to work with on helping us get some of these things. You know, we uh, this is a partnership with the city. And so we want to make sure that we're being as cost effective as possible. So we've had some great support from IT and the facilities department, leisure services. Um, I'm sure there's others that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but those have been the most prevalent. Michelle. And of course, Michelle has <laughs> been course. fantastic. I saw her. She was over there. Um, or um, directing uh, visitors and uh, <laughs> cooked a mean turkey sandwich. Uh, nobody really wants me to cook, really. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. So, so Brendan, uh, we had the League of Cities here um, 2021, mm -hmm. and we have to market this September. Mm -hmm. So Spectra is also running the Coralville facility, correct? Uh, we are, uh, yes, we're in pre-opening on that. So, yeah, we just got to make sure 
you know, whatever best practices that we can adhere here, there. Um, are, are they in Coralville this year? Yeah, yeah they I mean, are we in are, September. We are managing the arena there. Yep. Uh, I, I wasn't, I'm not sure if that's the location where it will be, but um, we are managing that space. So um, can certainly get some insight onto what's going on there. Yeah, and then I know, um, we were we in Des Moines? Did we ever go to Des Moines while it was there? So we probably will be able to pull our minds together to, uh, from Des Moines to Coralville to here, um, what we can do better. And we, we, when we do an event such, that's that important, we definitely will be looking to pull some of our other teams in from right. that have done the events, uh, such as Des Moines and the, the um, League of Cities. Oh. We postponed it. We, it was supposed yeah. to be here when 19, 20, 19. 19, I think. And, you know, due to foreseen and unforeseen <laughs> problems, uh, we didn't have it, so we pushed it back. So um, we had a lot of improvements and stuff to hopefully get down by. Yes, sir. Um, is it Brendan? It's Brendan, yes. Oh, so. What you, you brought up all this old stuff and this mm -hmm. stuff that is my era. So what are you going to do with it? In what sense? Like what, with the, the, old stuff. the old stuff? I mean, you're going to replant, you're going to re, re, you're going to reinvent <laughs> sure. the wheel. So, so uh, are, are you referring to the equipment that we're looking to replace? Well, I mean, you, you talked about dishes and China oh, and, okay. and table service and all that. Uh, so what happens with all that? We are looking, we're, we're working with Michelle to uh, find appropriate disposal methods for some of these items. The goal is to not pay to have it hauled off in one way or another. Um, with hopefully, you know, some of these things may have some value to them. And so we'd like to try to capture that if we could. Um, you know, the, I was talking about the pipe and drape. Um, there's a fabric component. I don't know the fabric is usable in any way. Um, but there's a lot of aluminum associated with that. So, uh, it's not in a condition that I would want to have it repurposed or reused in any way. So we'd look to a, uh, taking that to a scrapyard and uh, getting some money from that to put back into the operating funds. And you'll uh, pay the, for that, right? What? Nothing. Okay. Um, the uh, so the China. Just, we, it's our budget. Remember. Yeah. Um, so the yeah the China is uh, something that we could certainly look at um, trying to sell, but it would probably be more beneficial to donate that to um, so that we we could look into a nonprofit that might be use be able to use it or. Um, somebody suggested for the chairs earlier going to the Habitat for Humanity Restore. That might be something they could take or something of that nature as well. Um, like I said, the goal is to not pay to dispose of anything, um, but make, you know, try to find another life for it in some form if possible. Is all that owned by the city right now? Yes. Okay, so the city could do like the city what, can best, do what, it like what yeah. best Western did and have just auction. an auction. A, a what do they call that? A estate kind of auction where there's <laughs> dollars on it, stuff like that, and people just come in and grab. It's hard to when we, how, where we would do that and how we would do yeah, that. Wasn't the best way to kind of hard for the city. Well, that's well. Western. <laughs> had, had the well, model. they had, I know, but they had an empty facility and people that they paid to come do it. So. <laughs> Well, I'll just have Kelly go there, and it'll empty out in a hurry. <laughs> okay. I, 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 do, I just I don't know that there's enough value to make it worth there's trying to staff something like that, to be yeah, honest. That's, that's um, I, I don't know that there's enough value there for covering okay. that cost. Um, I, I think that it would probably have a bigger impact to find people that would come get it and can repurpose it in some form. But if you have anyone who's interested, let us know. Oh, sure. <laughs> like if you have a place that you could use 772 folding chairs. <laughs> I know scrappers, but they're not going to give you the money. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thanks. Watch your step. Yeah, yeah don't, don't trip. trip. I would be bad. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think they said he's going back to paint.
you over there. His finance guy can't. He's the first general manager. And he's like, <coughs> a who's actually willing to paint and do all the things Brendan's been doing over there. Wow. It's hard at it. I have all kinds of handouts for you today. Ooh. So I think we're just going to start. If we have any questions on the budget that he submitted, can you answer those, Michelle? I will try. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. It's like a miracle. It balances itself. Out. This was the first time. Passed around. Tim, don't print this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you need yeah. But this was the first time that we've had the tournaments. I didn't get one call. Yeah. Really? My nephew was there and really enjoyed it. I did. Yeah. I did go. Okay. Oh. I did go well, I think it's a lot because I'm there every week for Rotary. Thank you. But I did go to the dark tournament because I always wanted to see how that goes. Kind of interesting to see how that goes. So. Yeah, I was shocked. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. There you go, sir. So I actually like text. I think I got a lot of chaos. Oh, it's looking like that. Oh, I know. <laughs> he didn't miss anything. Yes, he did. It's too boring it's here. About the pup, the kitten. No. Nope. Don't go there. No. Nope. Okay, I can't go over there. Nope. They don't like the kitten story. <laughs> Where does this one go? Copies the last the end of the line. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. Did I get one of those? Did I get that packet? Probably not. Sorry. Apologize. That's not good. What is this one? I have no idea. Well, I'll explain that once I figure out what you got. I've got five. We got them. First yeah. thing you probably got is the hearing notice that should be in tomorrow's paper. The what? Yes. It's called the hearing notice. I think that might be the thing I don't have a copy of right now. This one? One page? One page. Oh, one page. I have extras. Okay, there are two different ones. Oh, I've got How did I get a stack? I've got an extra one here, too. what we're publishing that includes the tax levy rate which is still Four. showing the 18, 1887 um, as the maximum we can adopt and it also has in the lower third of that page the first column is the maximum expenses by program that we'll, we're held to for fiscal 21 without doing a formal budget amendment hearing so Where, where's that the um, first column where it says budget FY21 that column right and then the bottom at the bottom half of that it says expenditures and other financing uses yeah so public safety for example is at 35 million 884 389 and so on okay. so geez <laughs> I don't know if that meant that was too much or not enough <laughs> I, don't know. I do it every time and I thought about not doing it I'm going to be consistent. <laughs> and so what we published is the, it's called the maximum levy. You have the actual state forms. Now, this is a draft. This is a five-page document that says 07054 up in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. It's... It's, part, it's kind of similar to the hearing notice. It's just got more detail in it. So that breaks out our revenue, our expenditures, <coughs> and the, all the tax levies. And again, I, I did use all the maximum levy information because it didn't feel like we had reached any other conclusions at this point. So you have all that. The 
next set of documents, this is the Excel that you're used to seeing. And one of them, the first one we're going to talk about has no red type on it, and it's the maximum levy budget comparison. And that is what matches all the, the first two documents that I did. So this will be all the expenses and revenues by department. And this time, I did include a tab for all other funds. So all the city funds are in here now tonight. And those, again, that should also come out to about the 1887. So you can see how all that is flowing through. That's a, that comes out, that's the max levy hearing budget. And then on the fourth page is, is the 1887 at the top. Correct. Of it. Okay. Yep. Tim, go ahead. Then I have just a couple more things. I'm just going to go explain all of them to you a little bit before we really do any further. The next set of Excels, this is a very similar format to the max levy, except at the top in red, it says additional needs version. And again, I also, this has the general fund and all the other funds this time. So that would be the level that the department's turned in. Do you have an extra of the one that doesn't have red at the top? I believe so. If not, that's okay. Yep, I do. And the very last thing we have is the, the council. And if you recall, I asked for your addition, so that this focuses more on council additions. So additional things that we did for that council wanted that departments may or may not have included. There were this is a single this, page. That's a single page this. sheet. And there, so basically there were three positions that departments had actually submitted and requested that are also on this list at the top. So the dollars for those are actually in, they're actually in the additional needs level requests, but I left them on here so that the people submitting them would realize they're all in there. And then we also added Could you explain the request. That? Yep, we can explain whatever you want now. Go over that again. <laughs> yes, so rows, and I printed this with rows and headers, hoping this will help us a little bit. On rows 14 through 18, mm -hmm. there are three positions that various council members wanted, but that the department staff had already submitted. So those requests were submitted in the department's additional need level. And then I've also got them on here so that you would know council was interested in them as well. So that's what's in that top section. Then starting on row 24 are the other things <coughs> that I tried to capture from discussions with council for other things they wanted to add. And that's what's on rows 24 through 49. And there, there were just a couple of things that affect funds other than the general fund, so I'm backing those out on row 56 so that we can get down to just the general fund impact. Can you explain the columns, A, B, and C? That's just different, different people. Oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Mayor, different yeah. Michelle, can you... <clears throat> What's the difference like on line 39 with the central garage with the full-time mechanic? Why, why is there a difference? Uh, rats because I forgot to fix it. <laughs> okay. I'm I sorry. Just, there were a couple other places. <laughs> yeah. That one was singular. We meant to, so. I think, actually, I think I fixed it and then I copied the wrong version for you. There, there was a $500 difference in revenue actually in the central garage that's kind of impacting that one. But okay. yeah, they're minor things. I assumed, but I just... Yeah, wanted. no, it's a is good question. Is that the same with 45 and... Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Yep. I 
Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Michelle on line 46 and 45. Yes. Where you have the uh, five first year firefighters and then the 25% funded, 75% grant funding and the deducting of the 318. Mm -hmm. Is this salary and benefits of the 25% on, on this line item, or is this just salary? It's salary and benefits. Okay. And but the benefits are coming out of a different funding source, not the, eight, not, well, not the 810 I don't, levy. Correct. They're not out of 810, but they're still part of the budget. And I right. don't know that the grant requirements aren't released yet, so I don't even know if benefits are included. They are. Okay. I believe they are. So, okay. This is just including all levies then. Not just the right. not just well, the general fund, because, like I say, I mean the salaries would be somewhere in the neighborhood of about fourteen thousand dollars a piece at the twenty five percent times five or around seventy thousand bucks. So what we're looking at then is another uh, twenty five thousand for benef for their benefits. Yeah, I mean they have a pretty healthy pension. And then you've got health insurance and Medicare and those. Yeah, I, I was just clarifying that all this was coming. This, this was including all of your I different levies. I believe it does. We intended to capture all costs. So, yes. Joe, option A, option B, and option C are different council persons. Mm -hmm. I mean, so there's three council people that had submitted unique suggestions yes okay yep. but the maximum levy that is in our second or third documents here mm -hmm. is it's a combination of of all of them of all of those where there's a number on a line it's not a combination of the numbers on the line uh, in other words the Line 39, full-time mechanic is is just one ninety-one thousand one hundred three. Correct. correct. Right. That's correct. And then we also picked up um, in option C, there's an additional position that was not in either of the other two proposals, for example. So row 16, we did add that as well. So, and we did and that. And also to 49. Yes, correct. Okay. We did that to give you the most flexibility in choosing now what, what you want to do. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. And, and if we choose to, uh, instead of funding a, a, a full-time code enforcement officer, create that part-time position to full-time, that money's going to change. Correct. Oh, yeah. Because, right... And it depends on, yeah, it just depends on what you do. If you don't continue the part-time and you change it to full-time, or you could have two part-time, that would be that, that would less expensive. be less expensive benefit-wise. Correct. You know, because I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the one part-time code enforcement officer one of, like, uh, he just strictly wants to work part-time? I believe that's correct. I, I'm not sure, but... He did accept the very part-time job, so. Right. Mr. Law Mayor, where it says add back revenue increases, do we know where those revenue increases are coming from? Um, which, 50, I'm sorry, 53. 53. On the, uh, oh, single sheet. yeah, that's, it's the grant funding for the fire department. That's it's all the fire? 46, if you'll see, that's the same amount. Okay. I did get those to match up all the way across. <laughs> So that's good. <laughs> Yay. Can you explain line 56? Yes. Um, there's a, there, a library assistant position was requested, and we are currently charging about 30% of each position to the library levy. So I'm backing that out of the general fund. And then the same with the code enforcement officer. Code enforcement is currently funded in the sanitation fund, so I'm also backing that out of what the general fund requirements would be. And we did, those are added into those other funds on the other fund section. If we had questions on these positions, do you have the answers as to what the need was 
and why the council member thought there was a need. Do you know that? Because we might not. Um, I might have <coughs> theories. I don't know that I would necessarily know. Yeah. Like, do you want to know a certain why someone asked for a certain position? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have. I, just ask. Mr. Mayor, I think that Except probably well known work. that I was option A. I have no idea who you well, were. Well, I'm option A. <laughs> well, that's that, what though. I was wondering. I didn't know if that staff there... person would want to share so, so that we, it was theirs. So we can, can we just cut through the your option A, right. uh, A for effort. Um, but can you just ask ask the question, like, why is it? Well, I will, but if the person wanted to be anonymous, that was what, what I did. That's what the A stands for, anonymous. Well. <laughs> <laughs> can, uh, well, well that's why she's so asking if, they, if I can so if, answer so for them. Of, that's right. Instead of Michelle having to interpret yeah. what's behind the eyes of a council member. Right. That's okay. hard. Okay. That's if fine. there's a position on here, can a council member just ask? Is that okay with council or? It's fine by me, Mr. Mayor. Right. We'll see. And if they don't answer, it wasn't it wasn't him. It was one of the other. <laughs> well, now we know six. Well, it a. couldn't have been you, so it's down yeah. to five. So which? Um, <laughs> well, which, you which, just know she was an option A. Mayor. She might be B or C. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I, I do have a question for um, anonymous. Um, for <laughs> the. Met funding. I know that you all had a presentation before I was on here, um, and I couldn't know. When, we did. Did we have? We, a we met? did. Oh last, yeah, we did. Last but Mark is coming. He's going to come present to you the tenth. Okay. When? I'm sorry. The tenth. What my question was is: Was this for one of the specific um, new loops that they wanted for the Met funding, or was it just a general? We this was a holdover give. from last year. Okay. Jonathan. And the year before and the year before. They haven't well, had an increase okay. forever. Okay. Yeah. But, so let me, please let me address that. Um, I believe that we funded their additional request for operations in the additional needs level. And this would be, in addition to that, <coughs> is intended to be an additional, that additional airline need. route, I believe. So it's but, two well, additional. Okay. Yep. Um, so then pivoting to Michelle, who can be named um <laughs> no i'm i am she who can't be named <laughs> um so just because i just want to make sure that i'm clear like we do have a met transit tax piece right oh, we like, do today it's, it we've been funding it i think it's 1.4 million annually um and it's being requested to go up to it had, well, on the maximum levy, if you pick up both pieces, it would be a total of one point five three million. So, so would this be coming out of the general fund, or would it be part of that that met tax? It, it would levy? be part of that separate tax levy, okay. but it does add to our property taxes. Okay, and I just want to clarify for myself. All right, because yep. what are we at right now at the met levy? You mean just for the met levy alone? Yeah. Um, What's well, the rate? You know, actually, it's at. 65.75 if they're limited to no nope, they can go up to 995 95. so we're we're still under the limit what do i have a great idea <laughs> no, i'll wait till later <laughs> <laughs> it's too late we can't take them up to the cap <laughs> so so michelle where's that 72000 you said it was already incorporated into this no, Line the, 40, the 48000 is in the additional needs level. So if you go to... Okay, your, I got it. I got it. Your additional needs, you it's should... 34, see. right? Correct. Very good. Okay, so... Go over it. So what, what you're saying is that is um, helping to make up for two-thirds of what was requested um, last year? I'm not or what, certain. Well, about Mark those is going to be here. What, so. what that is, yeah, Mark will be able to explain this better Tuesday. But what that is is they are requesting like a three percent increase for their regular operations, and that equates to forty-eight thousand two hundred fourteen dollars, and that's what we put in the additional needs request. And it's true that we hadn't increased them for a couple of years. They had some different things going on, some new revenues and different things that they were able to use that apparently we don't have now. So that's why the 48. 
And then the 72 was something that some people, it was interesting because as Mark presented when he did present to us, that the employers on airline thought it was great to expand as long as it didn't cost anything in taxes. So there is a cost. So that's what, what we're telling mean, you. Things aren't, aren't free? What? Yeah. So we have Shocking, the 48, <laughs> whatever, and then and the 72. If you choose, if you choose to do both, yes. Yeah. But Pat, if you had the 72, was that? Did you think that 40 some thousand was part of that, or did you want? No, it? I did not. Yeah. I did not know that 48,000 even existed when I submitted my additional ones. Okay, I believe Because that. we asked for them before we knew that. So your 72 could be reduced by the 48. I want to hear what Mark Little presents. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Just, just my thoughts on some of the positions, and, and I appreciate trying to give people as many extra positions as they want, but it, it just seemed like some of the department heads weren't receptive to additional positions. And I have a hard time funding positions that the department heads haven't asked for. Have, have, number one, haven't asked for, and, and, and number two, doesn't mean that they're going to fill those positions, even if we put it in the budget. So uh, I'd, I'd have to take a hard look at some of these positions. I mean, Marty said he didn't want an assistant attorney right now until maybe next year he could look at it. But he said he was at this point in time he doesn't want an assistant uh, another attorney. Uh, Mr. Bennett talked, that didn't ask for a mechanic. Uh, uh, Nick at the library he seemed surprised. He was like, well, I guess I could use another person. I mean, yeah. I, I just I, I just have a hard time looking at at some of these figures and I have to work it out. You know, for the end of this process, but. Uh, we could save money by by hiring another part time code enforcement officer that would knock that ninety thousand dollars down considerably. Uh, uh, it would just be a, the 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 hourly wage and not not benefits. Um, like I say, the, the city attorney uh, on the human rights aspect, uh, do they need help? Yeah, but but uh, could they? Uh, they were talking about going trying to go countywide. And if we if if they pursued that and went countywide, that would hopefully create additional funding for additional people, uh, with other entities paying into it. As far as the uh, 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 Mr. Casperi asking for an, another maintenance person, I used to work out there in the, at the fire department, and the, the, that amount of maintenance people has been there forever. He's just trying to front load so that he can have a person there when he has a retirement at the end of the end of this fiscal or a uh, calendar year. But potential stop, retirement. I don't. Airport is one that he asked. For, he asked right? for that, yeah. right? But, okay. But Mr. Bozen's correct. That is, he does have someone who is potentially retiring. I don't know that it's official, no, as far as I know, because that, he's been telling us this for like three years now. Yeah. But some at some point that individual will retire. And, and most of us don't get the luxury of being able to replace, you know, to add to replace that so far in advance. So those those are my those are my issues. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Well, likewise, I have some concerns about all this hiring at the fire department. And my thinking was this, when we got the report from Chief Trailer that fires are down, deaths are down, calls for service are down, I and we're, we're doing all of that, we're accomplishing that trend with the number of people that we have and the number of facilities that we have. I just don't know that that what we see happening calls for five brand new firemen. The cost of putting a fireman on and maintaining them and paying pensions is just crippling to cities. Especially if we were not doing good, I would consider supporting that. But we're doing very well with the team we have. So would you say that, that if we had more fires, you would justify more people? I would say that we are looking like we are succeeding the way we are right now. But that our team for, is handling this very well. But what I'm what I'm looking at here is picking up five people to keep Station Six open to help reduce overtime for a total cost of ninety five thousand dollars for five people. That that that's, that's less than twenty thousand dollars. It is right. That's, what, that's less than twenty thousand dollars a person for the first two years, and there's some 
really exciting things that are going to be going on in that fire department that I think that they'll that their budget will be able to justify after this two year period to support those additional people. And and I would agree with with Councilman Bozo that yes, right now, but. This is a very, that's a very difficult, very physical f field. Uh, you're, you're one torn shoulder muscle away. You are one tripping over a pole act. You are one unfortunate big event, um, away from not having enough people. And over time, and I understand why this, the city council voted on it last year, um, to keep station six mostly open and that has succeeded, but over time is expensive over the long run. And that was a, short-term solution we have to start moving towards a long-term solution and this is probably as cost effective as as we're going to get on hiring the number of firefighting staff that we need um, to keep station six open to make sure that we're we're continuing to meet the challenges that face a community of our size um, while also in a way having personnel as insurance because these are fields where, you know, if I break my arm tomorrow, I can still teach. If a firefighter breaks their arm, they aren't fighting fires. Um, and so while we might be okay today, we also have to think about tomorrow. Um, and, and this is a very effective way to, to plan ahead for tomorrow, in my opinion. And there's no guarantee we're going to get the grant. Right. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Well, okay, so with um, the uh, safer grants, as uh, Councilman Bozen just said, there's no guarantee we're going to get the grant, and even if you get the grant, there's no guarantee where the, when they're going to be hired and when they're going to be put on board. And to me, those are problems with that. Uh, but public safety, which fire is, which police are, as we know how much of the uh, overall budget they take up, and... I, I believe in public safety to the max, but at the same time, not to the detriment of all the other departments. And that includes uh, other departments, which people could say have something to do with public safety, like code enforcement, like animal control, um, like um, Human Rights Commission. And the Human Rights Commission, to me, a half of 1% for an agency that provides a public service, but also is there for public safety overall and is there to guarantee at least some semblance of enforcement of issues having to do with human and civil rights. Uh, and having them so short-staffed for the longest period that there has been um, that I've been on council is, I think, unbelievable and is unconscionable. The uh, things that I put in here are no additions from what was written down last year. If you remember, anybody was on council last year, there was not only the mayor's budget, but there were three counter proposals that were submitted at that time, four budgets by myself. And I believe that there were other people that had submitted some other things at that point Almost in time. And um, so what I'm putting in here are things that aren't <clears throat> just brand new. They're old, and they were requested before. I'm just bringing them back because they haven't been satisfied. And I can make a justification for all those, just as Councilman Bozen did very effectively for the fire positions or anybody else who had anything on here could. And so if there's going to be any kind of budget that anybody is going to submit overall, and I hope that you, Mr. Mayor, we get to see your budget relatively uh, quickly um, that we can look at um, so that we can make tweaks and adjustments to the budgets, budget proposals that we're going to have. And I remember, Michelle, last year, um, those last days leading up to the approval of the final budget, there were things that I had never put in any kind of a budget that I had proposed that were takeaways. Uh, I think there was some money that was subtracted from debt service and 
health insurance and that kind of stuff, which I as a councilman and maybe anybody else as a council person doesn't have any knowledge of or recognition of when we're creating our budget. So it'd be nice to know what those figures are so that our budget proposals that we're presenting would show that uh, equally. And we could, we could have that as part of our budget as well, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, that, Michelle, when do you have to have our final numbers so that it can be presented on the 19th? Good question. <laughs> Who, whose final numbers? The numbers that the council agrees to. We have to have it to Michelle <coughs> enough time that she oh, can. Yeah. It would be get, nice to have it decided, you know, by the 16th or, yeah. So give us two days to get everything put together. By the 16th? At the end of the day. And, and Mr. then, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, when, when right, can we expect so your you, you, We would have had it, um, but we, she has to calculate, and we're trying to take into account uh, council's wishes. We have a different council, so we had to go through all of these line items, these requests for positions, had to do all that. So I'm seeing the paperwork in real time because it takes so long to get this done. So. I haven't even gone back through, so I'm, I'll try to, I, we're going to work this weekend, hopefully. So, uh, you know, hopefully by next week at this time, we'll have, have something. Your budget. Yeah. M Mr. Mayor, could I ask a couple just very basic questions uh, for Michelle right now to get some ideas? You, you've been asking. <laughs> yeah. well, I yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And then I want to have some concluding comments for us all to think about. After oh. we're done. Okay. Could I, would you have uh, approximate value of a uh, human rights? Is that number 85,040 for one? Is that the total amount for one position there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And for the Library assistant, that one position is $56,010. Yes. Well, it actually, it's more than that. You have to add the 56 and the 17. And the 17, because both of those numbers go into the final amount, right? Correct. Okay. And then garage mechanic, is it's 91123 not it, 90. It's actually 90. It's well, 90. Uh, you know what? Now that I say that, I'm going to tell you wrong. Let me just look quick. Sorry, use the 91-123. Okay. And uh, assistant position, is that just sort of made up or? The assistant attorney. Is, is, is that, that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> we just picked. Put together employee. something. Yeah, okay. it's, it's maybe a paralegal salary. I don't, I really don't know. I didn't know if it, I didn't know if we'd end up at full time. And okay. if we do full time, then I'm not sure we need all the other funds in that budget. So I think we could find a way to work that out. Okay, and what, what funds might we be able to dispose partially? Well, that account 1313, where we use other attorneys, I would hope, I, I don't know, because I, I think there are times we should be using others and specialists. So I don't, I'm not, okay. I'm not interested in wiping that line out, but I think potentially there could be some adjustments. Okay. And I, 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 I just remember what uh, city attorney Peterson said the other day when he said, I mean, when we were talking about this additional position and he said that he had to make use of the recently retired city attorney to do some additional work uh, to help him out. Uh, building I inspections. I think we thought his experience would be really good for what he was having him do. Mm -hmm. but. I'm sure it was, <laughs> but I'm sure. Did he work free gratis, pro bono? Well, no. He's, oh, okay. He's paid. Okay, and so building inspections, and that's also the rental inspection person, ninety one eight oh seven. 
That should be the cost, yes. Okay, and what would one firefighter position be? About $85,000. It's... Oops, went too far. It should be fifty six thousand in salary plus plus your benefits. Yes, give me a moment, please. Um, I want to find the first year. Or fifty four thousand, somewhere in there. I think it's eighty four and some change, but of course I'm not finding the one. So about eighty five thousand. Thousand. I was I was off the change. <laughs> off the couch. Is that about eighty five thousand? Eighty five. She said it's just under. <laughs> okay, and wow. then the code enforcement was ninety thousand two forty one. Yes. Okay. Can okay. I ask on that code Thank enforcement? You. This is to add a full time code enforcement. Did somebody say there's an addition of a part time one someplace else? It's not Dave, shown. David here. brought that up. Yeah, sure. He's just going through. If he's you if you want to let him go through his. His items. This is he wants to ask Michelle. So that's just him going through his items. I know. So. I just had a quick. Question. No, that's okay, Sharon. That's Thank okay. You. Yeah, and so that halftime position that David talked about in code enforcement would be. Do you have any? What is the other? Where, David, where's that? But we already uh, have one. So I, I what I understood Dave to say is maybe instead of hiring a full time, we could hire another part time. Right. If you find the right people, you can do that. And that cost, for this particular individual, it's a 19-hour week position. That cost is only 19681 dollars Well, yeah, there might be some. Uh, I should pick up the taxes on that. And we wouldn't need another pick. 23045 total for the 19-hour part-time. And then you can have them at the times of year that are busy. Because you wouldn't have to add the benefits. Okay, and then up above the ones that the department's already requested, those are accurate. The graphic artist, the airport, and the, in, the GIS specialist. As well as, as, as I understand it, yes. Okay, thank you. That's that's it. I don't have anything. This is Julie. I already I had didn't my question. About you. No, I got my question answered. Thank you. Yes. Ask a quick question. Choice, yeah. Please. Sorry. Thank you. But the GIS specialist, I know it's like it's the one hundred one thousand, but the conversation that had surrounded it sounded like it could come from various depart be used in various departments. Correct. Well, it wouldn't necessarily come out of one department's budget. Yeah, I, I that gets complicated. But yeah. so the person we have working on GIS today, Is and it? they do mostly work on public works types of projects right now, or in other words, streets, sewers, storm sewers, that that job is currently funded out of road use tax. But it isn't, I don't know that we can necessarily just add another whole position to it. So I'm not sure what the needs are for, the, for how we add this and how we, I don't know what is, needs to be done in the existing position that would not be done by this position. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so we we need to figure that out, I think. Would that position that is currently helping Chris now go back to engineering anyway? Because he's, he's sharing it with engineering, correct? Well, but that's the question. Engineering changed how they're doing things, and they're so he's been doing, as I understand it, mostly GIS. So. I don't know if they have a need for another full-time position because the position they have today, they decided to prioritize GIS and have this person doing GIS. So, <laughs> so does Chris need a GIS person then? That's I the mean, question. He, asked for one. I, he did ask for one. Yes, right. he did, and I, uh, I just I mean, don't I know. Just I just don't here. understand the whole. Could full could picture. I could I interrupt a minute? Uh, Mr. Bozen. I'm done. I'm oh, good. I'm and, and Michelle, uh, the back and forth that just happened uh, from conversations regarding the capital improvement or CIP, when you look at the, those budgets, 
and you see the amount of money that is there in engineering and you find out that those projects aren't being done. And my belief and opinion is they're not being done because we don't have enough staff in engineering. And okay. so if we're taking somebody out of engineering to do an MIS position, to me, that defeats the purpose of why we're having all of the CIP monies go into engineering. And there's, I mean, we got a balance of engineering of like $10 million. Well, it's more than that probably. But okay. you have to understand that that position doesn't do those projects. That position, the position today is called a draftsman position. <laughs> you know, their computers have drastically changed that work. And the GIS records that are being gathered are also, I believe, going to make things a lot more efficient. So some of that bond money, these projects get held up in review for months at the Army Corps for permits, at the Iowa DNR for permits. So it isn't necessarily <coughs> always a lack of staff on our part. Wal look at the Walmart situation. Right. How long did that hold we, us up from years, being able to do that? Yeah, years. We, I think that Dry Run Creek was first designed by 2015, and it's just now under construction because of a whole mm -hmm. list of things. But a significant one was we needed a very inexpensive um, piece of property from Walmart, but it took a very long time to get them to... But, but, Michelle, what I'm saying is that over the course of time, the number of city employees has gone down. And we've got departments. We've heard the department heads so far talk about the positions that they have full time, but it doesn't tell you the whole story about those people in those positions that are off on long-term disability or that uh, are... Uh, missing uh, uh, X amount of days being able to work, but yet we're expected to work with the same amount of staff or look at not at not filling positions that have been left there as requested in the past. Um, I, I just, I can't imagine that uh, pup, the uh, mechanics out there I, I just, I can't imagine. I, they just lost two. I don't know how they're, they're, I don't think those two have been hired back on, but yet they're expected to take care of that full load of uh, machinery and equipment. Uh, and we had that conversation two and a half years ago, three years ago, uh, but it continues to come up in the need for another mechanic. If for no other reason than what I've heard department heads talk about is the number of people that are gone all the time on illness or disability or long term, maybe they're going to serve the country, you know, and uh, different things like that that take place. Uh, I just think the need for more people to do the job to provide the services that the citizens of Waterloo um, want is there and that they sh those positions should be filled. And it may cost a few more uh, pennies, but the service provided is going to mean that much more to the people of Waterloo, Mr. Mayor. So, Mrs. Klein. Well, I, did, I was listening to what my colleague said. And um, the thing is, though, Mr. Bennett said that they're pretty much caught up. And now that they are, now they are working ahead to preventive, into preventive stuff. So he doesn't, he did not indicate that they are behind like they used to be. He indicated the exact opposite. And, and sometimes when we use phrases like it's just a few pennies, well, those few pennies over these long years have now placed us, we were in second place for cities our size as far as the tax levy, and we are going to bump that hard and perhaps move into first place as the highest taxed city our size in Iowa. And people don't understand that. Mrs. Jewin. Um, yeah, whoever option C is, I'm, um, I am now questioning again the code enforcement because my understanding was that through sanitation, through the whole um, recycling, that there would be some staff from sanitation that would be able to help 
code enforcement. And so I'm wondering why the person thinks we need another full-time code enforcement in addition to the assistance they're getting from. Are you C? That, that's code enforcement. That sanitation people are are to assist with code enforcement, large right. scale cleanups, not out going out <clears throat> issuing citations and understand. But that will, I, I, he had one time said that it would also help with some of the citations. So he didn't say it this time, but he had mentioned before he said, that he said administ he said cleanups because we were did we the were other behind. night. Yes, I did understand that. But <coughs> you, so you think we need? Are you C? Are you C? Who, who's who's C? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just wondering if they knew about the variable. I'll be C too. Okay. You want to be C too? Yeah, okay. Okay. So, do you think would they need a full time person sure. in addition? Yes. Then why didn't you put it under column A? I got it. <laughs> well, forget. He but, was but who, when but, he and I talked, but, I, I must be fair. We were talking about general fund that day, so he may not have gotten to some others. Okay, so the person who's got C knows that that's not going to be general fund, right? Well, they should now. Yes. <laughs> they should now. That's right. Whoever Mr. I they have said that they would fess up who they were, but they obviously aren't proud of their sure. work. <laughs> you know, you just adopted it. You didn't submit it. Well, isn't that good well, enough? He might no. Have, he may, he, he may, may have, have called some, me later. You right. never know. Oh, well, okay. So you're A and C? Yes. And okay. B. I called in And B? Were you <laughs> the <laughs> only person? If you recall, he Colbert C. <laughs> and he did, <laughs> he did submit three proposals oh last year. Oh, my God. So. <laughs> I understand. This is deteriorating I have trouble rapidly. keeping up with him. <laughs> Bank. Tim is going to write an so, article so through about A, Mrs. B, Mrs. and C Ju and who Mrs. they could be. <laughs> Mrs. Juwin, are you are you done with your um, I, I, questions, ma'am? I'm confused, but I'm done. Yes. Well, I think I think um, they've been whoever it was. I would assume has been hearing about the need for additional code enforcement support, <laughs> keeping up administrative cleanups. So the thing about this conversation and hearing the department heads is now maybe there's a different way to approach to do to do this, but this is, I, what I'm seeing from this is they want some additional code support. Uh, if it's not the 90,000, as long as code gets some type of support. But Mr. Greider. Yeah, I, and I don't know if this. Uh, I'm sorry, are you done? Yeah. Because you, you want to sure. know, you want to know why someone wanted wanna... a conditional code enforcement person. And No, I wanted to know what happened to that part-time person. And that was just in Mr. Boson's Imagination, right? No, no, you there's a part of it. He, he, you know, he asked yeah. the question about can we idea. have a, another <laughs> part time code enforcement instead of doing that? He was trying to find but a it's way. It's not on here. It's not no, on he here. No, he didn't give it. He just thought of it today. <laughs> gotcha. Like, ten, five we had minutes. talked about it the other day because it wouldn't add benefits. Then you should have put a D on there and added it, my good friend. <laughs> She's actually. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's an option. Oh, your option. It, it can be less now. It couldn't. I but mean. but taking this information will give us an opportunity this weekend to come back and try to marry some wants Good. versus some wants versus all the other wants, and then what the citizens can actually afford. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. So, in the name of efficiency, which is you know why I joined local government. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So. I'm just going to put out, like, while I was campaigning, what priorities I've heard, just so you and others, if they're thinking of drawing up their own budgets, I will not be doing that myself because I won't, because um, I have a two-year-old at home. So um, these are the priorities that I heard from my constituents. And and, and so um, one of them was the graphic arts director um, for the Center for the Arts. Um, one of them was... Having enough firefighters to keep Station 6 open, they did not give a number, um, but that was a priority that I identified as a priority that many of my constituents identified being served by that fire station. Um, I have overwhelmingly heard in the last couple of weeks, and while I was out door knocking, um, that the library should get some more funding. Now, I don't know if um, I would go as high as anonymous, but um, some more funding um, because that is seen by many of my constituents, many of my students as a frontline service, um, in many ways as important as, as those. Um, personally, I 
am very on board with your Waterloo 2040 or whatever we're going to call it. Um, because I think that we have to look ahead and we have to look um, more than just beyond our navel, more than just beyond our toes, but have to look at the whole horizon. Um, position you talking about? Wait a minute, you're talking about the body and the horizon? I'm mixing. The navel. <laughs> you're mixing metaphors, metaphors. and you fine. lost me. You're, so you're which right. position are you talking about? I know what you want. The, the, mayor's, the mayor's 2040 Oh, the plan. Proposal. Yes. The plan. I don't teach English, I teach social studies. Um, <laughs> And then I would be curious to see what MET comes up with mm -hmm. next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of constituents who are reliant on um, mm -hmm. uh, reliant on that service. Um, and so I would be interested in hearing what additional services or things like that. Um, but just in the name of efficiency, those are my personal priorities, if that helps whoever is drawing up these things. Okay. It helps Anonymous W. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, seeing as how we're talking about our constituents, I have had constituents call specifically about the library. They're really concerned about that. They feel that there needs to be the services there for that. The code enforcement issue, I've talked with you about that, and I've received a call from one individual specifically as far as him waiting three years for something to happen there. And then that strategic planning, I firmly believe that that is something that when I first started on this council, we had that plan where we had you implemented the five-year plan and that was very good so I'm in support of any more strategic planning that you see or feel is necessary other than that I have not received a lot of calls from anyone looking for more services on any of it so. how many people receive calls or seeing emails about uh, library the, the highest uh, a higher tax rate. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody's knocked on a door or heard anything from anyone. Oh well, wait a minute. <laughs> I've been, it, as you all know, I go door knocking. I go door knocking every single day that the weather's okay. And I started at Thanksgiving time, and by far and away, by far and away, and I know you don't believe this, but by far and away, they say their taxes are too darn high. They do want services, but they don't like the way that the division of services is being handled. But taxes is the number one. I just can't one. believe that some of your wars, nobody mentioned. It's interesting. Mr. Mayor, I, I think, and I, I understand that cons constituents are concerned. About, I, I'm a taxpayer myself. Like, I own a home. Like, it's an issue. But we also have to recognize that we have to, we have to provide services for the citizens of our community. And um, in many ways, um, our colleagues down in Des Moines, um, have have tied our hands on a lot of these issues, um, and I and I understand that that the current tax increase, if we if we did everything that's in here, um, would be a lot. But as Michelle has also said, that it would have a a lower increase. And I'm not I am not in no way, shape, or form suggesting that we do everything that everyone has asked for. But we we have to recognize our citizens have to recognize that. The state legislature has done some things that tie our hands on a on a very real level that makes us have to have very difficult conversations, but we also have to provide a level of services for the sixth largest city in the state of Iowa. Um, and the state is making that very difficult from time to time and a lot of the time lately, but we we have to be aware of that. And And when I've had conversations with constituents about, and they have said taxes, and then I have a conversation, we walk through it and explain it, and I teach them about that because that's my day job. Hmm. They have a better understanding, um, and I know there's nothing we can do about the state legislature here, but when we talk to people about this, they understand that we are we are making some Diocletian-type decisions. All right. Well, I was, what, I, what I'll leave with some parting comments is um, – we, we have multiple, multiple responsibilities, we have multiple priorities, uh, and we are being asked to um, maintain services at particular levels. So my, my philosophy, this is just me personally, has been uh, there has to be a careful balance. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a conservative, um, but I mean, I don't believe that we should just um, tax and tax tax for and you got folks that are professionals that have been here 20 something years and not even asking for positions right now because they're looking 
you know, they're looking at the crystal ball of their departments and also have their ears on the ground of what's taking place in the community as well. So I, we just need to have a, a careful approach, balanced approach to uh, this process, which all of you are thought leaders, um, but we need to have a careful uh, approach uh, to the way that we do it because to start off and we're at one point over the legal limit and that doesn't send an alarm or a chill to the fact that we need to take a look at the decisions because we're also our hands are also tied by legal limits so um, we'll have an interesting time uh, over this weekend um, wrestling back and forth to some of these to get something to um, to bring bring to you and may, 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 may I add one thing because I mm -hmm. I did not talk about this earlier but I do think it's really important that we all recognize I had to take 1.3 million out of fund balance to fund the max levy and still have that huge tax increase and the thing that probably concerns your finance people the most is if I'm at the 810 limit now how am I going to fund increases in cost in future years so growth is a hard hard thing to fund right now because we're, we've bumped into that ceiling and we can't we won't be able to continue to do it that way so we have to have either different sources of revenue or something something has to give in that equation so 1.3 million right now just to meet the legal now but part of that some of that does go to uh um, Councilman Greider mentioned that, you know, on other levels, our hands are tied. You know, revenue has shifted based upon what people are doing on state levels with us. So that does have an impact on us as well, and we have to recognize that. So it'll be a tough couple weeks, but we got Mr. Morrissey. Then we, did you have a comment? I do. I well, just think Mr. That's Morrissey terrifying. first. You can go first, Mr. No, I don't mind waiting. We're gonna follow Paul. Okay, okay, fine. Well, I, I know that we haven't talked about this, but I, I know I mentioned it to Michelle and uh, decided that I wasn't going to get into that. But there are additional revenues that I brought up in the past, which I'll be bringing up again in any uh, budget that I uh, am going to propose, and that includes franchise fee, and it includes. Uh, other kinds of uh, fees and that. Well, why are you keeping it from us? Why don't you just tell us about it and we can kind of work on something together. You're going to wait to. No, no, I can talk about it right now, but uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to have a parting statement there and I just wanted I to did, make sure and, that and people know kept that. Going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, keep going. Keep going. I well, I, I mean, as an example, a year ago at this time, we had uh, uh, checked and uh, it was about. Uh, $71,000, and there was a few um, uh, areas that charged fees and that or whatever that were left out. I think there was three. I don't have them right here in front of me. But uh, that was for a 1% increase in fees, 1% increase in fees. And so you, you bring, and I, I believe the statements were made a year ago that fees have really not increased. So I see that as being something that could be looked at in possible uh, revenue increases. And other people would say, well, that's just another tax. Well, it's, it's a uh, tax that's peculiar to the given um, fee that apply to that service. And then there's a franchise fee, and I know we're at four uh, since right now, correct, Michelle, I right. think, Perfect. okay, that that uh, can be considered. And then we also have the, excuse me, the um, traffic enforcement, the speed and the red light camera money that uh, I'm going to uh, bring forward a resolution so that we can change our prior resolution uh, and what that wording was so that we can have more of that money released, and I hope that other council people would look at that too. But then the other thing is a year ago, I had looked up 
a number of um, <coughs> statistics and water or Waterloo is one of 948 cities and towns listed in the state of Iowa. And out of those 948, there are, or a year ago at this time, and it may have increased since then, but there were 51 cities that were at 18.05 or above which is six with 60 cents above the levy rate that we had passed last year. Okay, and I did not go into all of those that were between our approved levy rate and 1805, but there were 50, again, repeat that, there were 51 that were above 1805, and it went all the way up to one of the cities having a levy rate of $24.42. So those levy rates, those, those uh, numbers are something that cities have to adjust to pay for the services that these cities see that they have to have. Do we understand that right now we are $1.3 million in our general fund? I mean, does that... It like we we Mrs. Klein. I'm with you on it. It terrifies me because there's nowhere to go when we run out of that pot of money. There's nowhere to go. So we're just band-aiding this thing up and sending it down for the next group of people to face our mistakes. Also, the pressures that the state applies applies universally. So when we don't do it as well as another city does it, that's on us. That's not on the state because we're all under the con same constraints. And when 60% of even our firemen choose not to live here, to live 10 miles from City Hall, which puts them in a small town I'm, climate, I'm not you've gonna, got a problem. I'm not going to argue about our fire department, because that's getting a little too personal within departments. I'm talking and about people opinion. moving away. In Pe two of my precincts, I had people tell me they were moving because of the taxes. In Waterloo, Iowa, last year, there were over 314 residential properties and houses that were built in the city of Waterloo, which is the highest amount we've ever had. The reason that we have that amount, because people are investing in Waterloo, I just think, and this is just my opinion, you know, I just think that we just have to have a careful balance of both. And we also, because... <laughs> Um, we need services. Fiscal health is important too. So we just need a careful balance of um, pushing the envelope here and maybe holding on to what we have in a particular area. But that's just my opinion. Council is going to be the ones that approve the budget. The only thing I can do is just give my opinion and work with uh, Michelle to try to put a decent product together for council to look at. Can I yes, ma'am. Um, so next week we have, um, we've got a work session Monday. We've got Met Transit coming on Tuesday. Um, and we have meetings scheduled every night at 4 o'clock for the rest of the week next week. For the rest of our lives? For the rest of your lives until you pass a budget. <laughs> so Monday through yes. Friday it all starts at 4? Mm-hmm. Quick question, Friday? Mr. Mayor, for you. Hmm. Quick question for you when you're done. I don't even have if, an answer, um, but I'll ask Michelle then. If we Please. don't want to meet on Friday, we can maybe discuss that next week. But for now, everything is scheduled 4 o'clock Monday through Friday next week. Yeah. But we don't meet tomorrow or this week. As long as you guys talk. And, and Mr. Bozen has a final question for us. I just us. have a question for, for Michelle. And I'm, I'm, we're already over the, the, the limit that we're going to have to have at least five votes for this. Correct. Oh, yes. If it's over 2%, yes. we're no. over 2%. And that what 2%, if it's under 2% by the time that, we're well, done? Then and it's that's 2% is our total tax collections. But yes, we must have five to pass a budget. So. We, we've got to be able to work together because we're going to need five votes to pass this. This this can't be other budget cycles that we've seen. <clears throat> um, this can't work. This, this can't be other budget cycles that we've seen in the past. Um, and I can speak for myself. Part of the reason I ran is that there was a lot of concerns about how budgets were done. I understand that we have to make tough tough calls. That's that's why we were elected. That's why we put our names on a ballot. That's why we told the constituents to vote for us. Um, but 
but the, this needs to be something that we can come all of us together or at least five of us um, and say this is this is what we think is best and and I agree with councilman Boson that that this can't be acrimonious that this can't be personal um, we might disagree and I and I firmly believe that a budget is a moral document it's what our priorities are as a city but at a certain point we have to leave the the partisan and the personal at the door and we just have to do what's best for Waterloo and we were dealt a rough hand and and we just have to come together we're we're a team um and and i think we should play like one okay that's it all right um i'll see you all monday second motion may with second all in favor aye, aye. aye. all right